In this video, we are going to talk about the human impact on the environment. So first of all, we can state that the current environmental crisis is due to the impact of human activity on life cycle. And to continue to perpetuate this current production of clothing, food, housing, and infrastructure, along with water consumption, requires a higher demand for natural resources than ever before. In this regard, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change states with 95% certainty that the main cause of climate crisis is human activity and that the consequences are already evident in the atmospheres, oceans, cryosphere and biosphere. It is important to remember that not all people and societies contribute equally to the environmental crisis. Regarding this, the United Nations points out that the richest 1% of the world's population emits more greenhouses than the poorest 50% of the people around the world. In other words, the contribution to environmental degradation is much higher in industrialized countries than in the rest of the world. Also, the United Nations remind us that we use equivalent resources of 1.6 Earth to maintain our current lifestyle. Thus, our planet is in danger and consequently our entire way of life. Well, the uh, COVID pandemic has had a major influence on the environmental crisis and has taught us some lessons. Firstly, the pandemic caused governments to stop prioritizing environmental issues as they decide to um, prioritize others. But this led, for example, to illegal deforestation or poaching. However, the pandemic also caused a global slowdown that led to a reduction in car traffic, a decrease in greenhouse gas emission and improved air quality and a recovery of species and ecosystems around the world. So it shows us that we can reduce the impact of our way of life on the environment if we all become aware of it. Also, combating this pandemic has shown that people have become very aware of this issue, which proves that awarenesses and communication campaigns are effective in carving a problem that affects us all. Okay, so far we have said that human activity is major responsible for the environmental crisis, but what have all these uh, so negative impacts? Okay, so let's start with population growth. Do you remember when on November 15th it was news that we reached 8 billion people? Well, this figure is, re is very relevant because only 72 years ago there were around 2.6 billion people on Earth. In other words, between the 1950s and 2022, the number of people on Earth has triplied. This population growth results in a huge increase in the need for food, water, housing and clothing and the plundering of natural resources. Well, so as I said before, we can state that there is a clear relationship between income and CO2 emissions per capita. Thus, the average emission of people living in industrialized countries are higher than in middle and low income countries, where the majority of the world's population lives. For example, in the United States lives the 40% of the world's population, but it is responsible for 17% of global energy consumption. Therefore, carbon emissions per person in the United States are among the highest in the world. On the other hand, the middle-income countries, where 75% of population lives, are in the middle between countries with the lowest emission and those with the highest carbon footprints. However, it is estimated that in these middle-income countries, industrialization will raise living standards and in the coming years they will catch up with the emissions of the richest countries. Therefore, we can deduce that if we do not change the way economy grow, uh, carbon emissions will continue to rise and with it the climate change. We must remember that people living in the poorest areas of the world contribute the least to climate change and bear the, br the brunt of the negative impacts of climate change. In particular, 9 of 10 most vulner vulnerable countries are in sub-Saharan Africa, which is expected to double in population by 2050. 
Well, um, the next problem we are going to talk about, it is the economic growth. According to the United Nations data, the world economy has grown almost fivefold in the last 50 years. It may sound like a good thing, but the reality is that the price some citizens pay to enjoy this economic development is quite high. Because this growth led us to the loss of biodiversity, uh, pollution, or to massive deforestation. Also, to continue perpetuating this uh, economic model of production and consumption, we use the natural resources that the Earth offers us and are already many alarms about the depletion of these natural resources, which, after all, are the fundamental pillar of our world economy. The European Environment Agency, present in the brief Growth Without Economic Growth, an overview of the various ideas about progress beyond economic growth. In this briefing, they explain how economic growth leads to increased production, consumption and resource use, which has negative impacts on nature, climate and human health. Moreover, uh, recent research suggests that economic growth is unlikely to be completely detached from its environmental impacts. So to achieve a sustainable future, policy measures cannot focus only on the technological change, but there must be a real change in consumption and social practices. The, Euro the European Environment Agency also reminds us that the global material footprint, along with gross domestic product and greenhouse gas emissions, and are strongly related and all have been increasing rapidly. Therefore, without natural resources, we cannot maintain this model, and for this reason, economic growth hand in hand with the sustainable development and the preservation of the environment must be a global concern that countries must, must address. Okay, so let's continue talking about the urban development. Currently, about half of the population lives in urban areas and the trend of rural urban migration is expected to continue to increase. At the beginning of the 20th century, more than 50% of the world's population lived in cities. It is estimated that by 2050, this percentage will exceed 60%, with most of the growth occurring in Asia and Africa. This population growth in urban areas demands many more natural resources and has a major impact on natural system. This is because the larger the population, the greater the need to urbanize uh, forest areas. For example, it is estimated that more than 13 million hectares of forest annually are converted to agricultural, urban and industrial land thus uh, possess a major threat and a loss of our biodiversity because the destruction of the habitats where certain natural species used to live means that they must adapt to live in cities. To mitigate this impact of expanding urbanization, appropriate planning and design cities is needed, um, considering the need to coexist with nature, as human survival depends on our ability to coexist with biodiversity and native um, communities. Well, here we can see a photo of the urban expansion in Shanghai since 1984 to uh, 2016. At the left, we can see the before, and in the right, we can see the after. So finally, we are going to talk about the technology. Well, technological development, particularly from the 20th century to the present day, has been extraordinary. Uh, but technology has also had impacts on the environment and contribute to climate change throughout her history. Its first major impact began with the Second Industrial Revolution that during this period, gold began to be used as a resource for uh, generating electricity in factories and homes. Today, we are living in the most technologically advanced years, and although new avenues of sustainable technological growth are now being explored, the reality is that early technological advances were not environmentally friendly, and unfortunately, we are still using coal and natural gas to generate electricity. 
So for this reason, all the knowledge and discoveries need to be put into practice in order to make technological development as environmentally friendly as possible. Thank you very much for watching the video and we invite you to watch the next ones.